everybody. I'm glad to be here with you to share some of my passion for math and probability, two building blocks of data science. For the next 20 minutes, we will explore the concept of logic and probability, not through theorems and proofs, but rather through riddles and puzzles. Are you ready? I bet that many faces had frown when they saw the title of this video. The word math can be traumatic to some students. That I know from experience. So let me ask you that question. How many of you like math? Usually, in a class of 50 students, two or three will raise their hands. That's expected. Now we can discuss why many, if not most students, don't like mathematics. I do have my own theory for that, based on my teaching experience for more than 500 students. But let's forget for a minute all the feeling you have for or against math and see how math, logic specifically, which is the theme of this video, can be quite useful in real life. Most schools devote time to teach mathematical techniques to apply in different settings, but not what mathematics is. Mathematics is the science of patterns, which applies to almost everything you can think about. Patterns of numbers, this is what arithmetic is, as a matter of fact. Shapes, geometry, motions, calculus, and other terms. Behavior, repeating chance events, does the word probability ring a bell, and so on. Logic is the branch of mathematics that study the pattern of reasoning, a fascinating science that contrary to what it seems can help us in real life. So let's discover if that is possible and if it was, under what conditions. In 2018, Eugenia Cheng published a magnificent and highly recommended book on the art of logic in an illogical word. To get a taste of her writing, refer to the following article on lithub.com. According to Cheng, mathematics is not life and logical proofs don't quite work in real life. Most real objects do not behave according to logic. I certainly don't. Well, sometimes, most of the times. You don't, do you? My computer certainly doesn't. If you give a child a cookie and another cookies, how many cookies will they have? Possibly none, as they will have eaten them. Pause for a second and think about this statement. Do you agree? And if so, why do you think that logical proofs don't work well in real life? Well, Chang's argument is that real life holds much more nuance and uncertainty than the mathematical world. In fact, the mathematical world has been set up to specifically eliminate uncertainty. Arguments to back something up in real life aren't as clear as mathematical proofs, aren't they? Wait a minute, I'm lost here. Aren't you as well? It seems that the distance between mathematics and the real world keeps on increasing. So why do we learn math then? Can somebody help me out here? Before we jump into any conclusion, let's look at logic and try to find a plausible definition. Logic is a process of constructing arguments by careful deduction. We can try to do this in normal life with varying results because things in normal life are logical to different extents. Many times, I'm not logical because I'm emotional. Sometimes, there's so much information, or too little at other times, for me to process about a certain event that I'm not able to make a logical decision. It happens to all of us, right? Can mathematical logic help in these cases? It can, by helping us understand ambiguity and disagreement. It helps us understand where the disagreement is coming from, so we can reach a more logical conclusion. Logic equips us with tools to better understand the world around us. It is that mental process of looking at a situation independently of specific circumstances that will allow us to reach a logical solution or not. A logical explanation to a certain event needs to be separated from personal experience. Understanding what is inherent in a situation involves understanding why things are happening in a very fundamental sense. It is related to asking why repeatedly and not being satisfied with immediate and superficial answers. You must be very clear about what things really mean 
Any logical argument starts with a clear definition of all the circumstances surrounding an event. How can logic help us in the real world? Logic provides us with the tools, the mental mindset, to understand ambiguity and disagreement, or more specifically, where this disagreement stems from. By defining the elements of any argument, we can reach a clearer structure to our head to what works and what not. Now, do not panic. I'm not going to walk you through what logic is and how to make a proof. So relax. We're here to have some fun. And what better fun than to learn logic through a puzzle? Yeah, you heard me right, a riddle. But first, let us ask ourselves the question, how would puzzle help us understand math? Puzzles, just saying the word would capture anyone's attention. How many of us has spent hours trying to solve some intriguing riddles? We all remember the feelings of frustrations and helplessness when it seems to us that the solution is impossible. But how many also remember that unmatched thrill and joy once we can solve them? We have all done it, right? Why riddles are so popular and why we all seem attracted to them. Nicolas Nassib Taleb, the author of Black Swan, a book that according to the Times has altered modern thinking, explains that a language can be learned in two ways. Pedagogical methods, which the author labeled as boring, that consist of memorizing verbs, grammatical rules, phrases, and passing an exam. Second, the need to communicate and integrate with a group of people who speak a different language. Like for example, being at a bar with a group of people and forcing yourself to learn their language to be able to communicate with them. Throughout my teaching experience, I noticed that some students do not perform well when asked to solve a problem using cold approaches, i.e. stating a theorem, providing a proof, and showing them how to solve it. These same students suddenly upregulate or improve when stimulated or when there is a play involved. Nothing new, it seems, as a matter of fact. Thanks to Alexander Bogomolny, the author of Cut the Knot, a generation of people have learned mathematics by playing, by solving riddles for the sake of entertainment. Nassib Talib states that riddles are a great tool for learning because first, they challenge the mind. Second, they expand computational thinking. And third, they provide a way to learning by playing. Again, the magic of riddles. Intrigued? How about we work our way through a riddle, one that involves logic? You're probably asking yourself, logic, why? Let's find out together next. A father tells his two children, a boy and a girl, to play in their backyard without getting dirty. However, while playing, both children get mud on their foreheads. When the children stop playing, the father says, at least one of you has a muddy forehead, and then asks the children to answer yes or no to the question. Do you know if you have a muddy forehead? The father asks the question twice. Now my question for you. What will the children answer each time the question is asked? Pause the video and solve the puzzle on your own. Remember the following. A child can only see whether his or her sibling has a muddy forehead, but cannot see his or her own forehead. Second, both children are honest and that the children answer each question simultaneously. Answers to that puzzle is that first time, both children will say no, and second time, they will both say yes. Did you guess that right? I hope so. Now, let me walk you into a more structured way of solving this puzzle, using the concept of propositional logic. You don't need to know what propositional logic is at that point. All you need is to formulate your statements that is clearly defined all the information you have about the children. Let us be the statement that the sun has a muddy forehead, and let D be the statement 
that the daughter has a muddy forehead. When the father says that at least one of the two children has a muddy forehead, he's stating that the disjunction S or D is true. Both children will answer no the first time because each sees mud on the other child's forehead. That is, the son knows that D is true, but does not know whether S is true. And the daughter knows that S is true, but does not know if D is true. After the son says no to the first question, the daughter can determine that D must be true. For if D were false, the son could have reasoned that because S or D is true. Because if not, then this will contradict what the father said about at least one of them have muddy foreheads. In a world governed by uncertainty, probability is the most scientifically applicable scientific subject in the world. Many of the laws of probability were applied to gambling and used by traders, economists, and finance mathematicians. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, probability theory is the branch of mathematics that studies the likelihood of occurrence of random events to predict the behavior of a defined system. There are different schools of thought in probability, the classical, the frequentist, and the Bayesian. All three are heavily used in data analytics and machine learning to predict system behavior. The beauty of probability is that the solution of many probabilities are based on intuition and common sense and do not require any theoretical knowledge. Consider the following griddle, the pencil logo. A pencil with pentagonal cross-section has a maker's logo imprinted on one of its five faces. If the pencil is rolled on the table, what is the probability that it stops with the logo facing up. Pause the video and think about it. The solution to this puzzle is straightforward. The probability of the event is zero because it's impossible for the pencil to stop on an edge as to make a face with or without the maker's logo shown on top. Quite intuitive, isn't it? Now let's move on to another slightly more complicated riddle, the Galton's paradox. Some of you might have heard of Sir Francis Galton, an English polymath who made significant contributions in many fields such as statistics, psychology, genetics, and others. He created the statistical concept of correlation regression towards the mean and the first to apply statistical methods to the study of human differences. The question from Francis Galton of 1894 concerns the chance of three fair coins turning up alike, meaning all heads or else all tails. At least two of the coins must turn up alike, and as it is an even chance whether a third coin is heads or tails, the chance of all three being alike is one to two. The question for you is the following. Where does the fallacy lie? Pause the video and think about it. Now, definitely, this is a fallacy. Why? Because there are indeed always two coins that come up the same way, both heads up or both tails up. It's also true that the remaining coin comes up either way with a probability of half. The fallacy is in the conclusion, because there is no certainty of which two coins get involved in the first part of the argument. If the two first coins were fixed, which is clearly not stated in the paradox, then the conclusion would make sense. Let's break this down by writing out all possible outcomes of this experiment. HHH, HHT, HTH, HTT, THH, THT, TTH, and TTT. This experiment has eight probable outcomes, so each outcome has a probability of 1 over 8. Two of them, the first part of the argument in this fallacy, asks about the probability of HHH or TTT, which is 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, 
which equals 1 over 4 and not 1 over 2 as stated in the paradox. In data analytics, you will be faced by many situations that will require a thorough understanding of probability theory. Many models that we fit to our data to predict sales, profits, disease spread, weather patterns require the application of probability theory. And the best way to learn about this theory is by solving these riddles. Logic puzzles were first introduced to the public by Lewis Carroll in the late 19th century and have been popular ever since. Games like Sudoku are fun and entertaining recreational activities, but they also share deep foundations in mathematical logic and are worthy of serious intellectual inquiry. If you really like puzzles and you are intrigued by their history and intellectual benefits, I invite you to read the Games for Your Mind book by Jason Rosenhaus, which explores the history and future of logic puzzles while enabling you to test your skill against a variety of puzzles yourself. Puzzles are great for your mind, and logic is essential for us to understand the word, but are also fundamental to shape our minds and helps us structure our thinking, which is essential for any data analyst or data scientist. Transforming data into information, deriving insights from numbers, and predicting patterns using programming languages require highly skilled individuals that have great attention to detail and the ability to process large information and see patterns in numbers or words, skill that logical mathematics nurture in young learners. Happy learning.